of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Mrs. Mayor, would you please do the roll call? I would be happy to. Kate Neer, I am here. Tim Menninger. Here. Lisa Collins. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Tom Cruise. Barely here. <laughs> <laughs> but that counts. It's yeah. okay. Um, Alex Zachary. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Uh, she's excused. And Anita Jacosinski. Here. Okay, with six of the seven board members present, I will declare a quorum. Um, school board norms reflection. Any comments? Hearing none, I would entertain. Um, actually, I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, any changes to the agenda? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I would so move. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We would ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Anyone? No one out there. Okay. Well, they're out there. They're Moving on. <laughs> District Administrator's <laughs> report, uh, Dr. Carlson. In addition to the status report summary, uh, we do have one happiness report from the middle school. Again, those will, uh, over the summer months, um, again, not be as frequent in our packet. Uh, but also, there are two items on here that I just want to share with you. They actually, um, both of these items are on the consent agenda this evening, and that would be 8.2 and 8.5. First of all, 8.2, it's just bringing back to you uh, your board meeting calendar, which you had approved back in April. We had an error on the date which the annual meeting is noted, and so that, again, was moved to September as a decision by at the annual meeting, and so um, just ask you to uh, go back and approve that revision. Um, 8.5, the Teacher Compensation Model Committee request for proposal. As I have updated the board in the past, uh, we continue to work on the teacher compensation model. We have a very active committee, and so the next step was to put out a request for proposal to potential vendors or firms that would be able to assist us, our committee, in getting input from the broader community. And so what you have in your packet is, um, again, a recommendation to approve um, Springstead Incorporated for that purpose. And so I have that uh, request for proposal in the packet and um, let me just go through. Uh, the recommendation is for Springstead, and uh, this would be the cost I put in there would be um, up to $12,850 based on the proposal. Again, we had other uh, proposals given to us, Patel for Kids, Carlson Detman, CBiz or CBIZ, Human Capital Services, Verisite, in addition to the Springstead. And um, again, very pleased with the response, and we thank those those um, firms for their interest in, in presenting a proposal. But it is the recommendation this evening that um, we entertain an agreement with Springstead Incorporated uh, for the purpose of helping us with surveying our community and then reporting back. So um, that's what you have, and I would be happy to take questions at this time on that request for proposal, that recommendation on Springstead. If you have questions, otherwise this will be on, this is on the consent agenda, and uh, so this would be a good time to ask questions if you have any. Questions? No. No. Otherwise, I think that's it for my report. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Moving along to reports and discussion. Elementary staffing plan, <clears throat> Dr. Carlson. I'm not going to go over to the side table unless it's necessary, but in your packet you have an issue paper that reflects the revised staffing plan for the elementary. I also included a revised board memo regarding the staffing plan that had a little bit more detail in it. But I hope that this reflects the direction of the board from the previous meeting, the June 9th meeting, where um, we modified the board rule to change the maximum allowed for grades pre-K through three from 30 to 27. And so this is based, this is based on June 16th. Uh, that would be last week, June 16th enrollment projection data. So applying that revision, that modification, uh, we have a staffing plan that as of June 16th would call for 75 classrooms. As I presented at the last board meeting, this would mean, um, this would be a decrease currently at this time of one section if you compare it to the original staffing plan that I presented back in April. Back then it was 76 sections, but as I explained in pr prior board meetings, um, we've been able to get a little bit more of an accurate um, projection. This would uh, result in a, a three classroom sections at, for grade three at Evergreen. And it would be my intent, unless the board directs differently, that any additional staffing as we proceed in the coming weeks would be coming back to the board for approval. And I would say to you, as I think the budget memo on the back side, you can see I gave you an update on where June 16th puts us. You can see that we have areas per the, the uh, board rule um, that we are at almost at capacity on the high end. And so those are ones that we continue to watch. And as in the past, we would be bringing, I would be bringing those to you if it's the recommendation that we need to increase. Um, so uh, I think we will take another good look at this in about a week administratively. And so um, it'd be pre premature for me to say what you can expect at July 14th, but don't be surprised if there is uh, a change as we review that. Um, as I do note too, and I mentioned this previously, We've kind of set a date of about July 15th where I believe it's important to make a commitment at that time of not reducing any classroom sections at a particular grade level at a particular school after July 15th. That does not mean that we may not come back to the board and requesting to add, but um, I think it's important to not reduce after that date. So this is on the consent agenda for tonight. Um, and I'd be happy to take questions. Um, I know this has been with us for um, a few weeks, and, uh, but I, I hope this reflects the direction uh, from the last meeting. And again, any questions? Otherwise, this would be on the consent. Questions? Nope. We've asked enough questions in the last couple months, so. Okay, thank you. Um, instructional coach position. <laughs> Thank you. We've talked a little bit, uh, well, not a little bit, quite a bit over the last weeks and months about our educator effectiveness. And uh, probably more through written communication uh, with the board, uh, tried to update, keep you updated on progress we're making on, on a direction that we'd be going related to what's referred to as an effectiveness coach. And this position is specific to provide support for our teachers and principals as we implement um, the system. So what you have in front of you that we'd be asking consideration for your approval at the next board meeting on July 14th is a position that we're titling district instructional coach. This is combining a position that you have already approved earlier with the district staffing plan of a 0.5 math coach position. We believe that at this time we could, um, there's enough uh, overlap and alignment that we could 
take advantage of some of that position and couple it with an additional 0.5 FTE position to focus on the effectiveness, um, educator effectiveness. In addition, just so you know, we would be tapping into some other uh, coordinator level positions to assist in the, in the coaching support as well. So the recommendation in front of you for your consideration at the next board meeting would be an increase of a 0.5 FTE district position, again, to be uh, coupled with the math coach position. This would result in an approximate additional cost of about $35,000. And uh, again, this is something that we, we believe is necessary um, as, we, as we go down this road of implementing our ed, ed effectiveness program. So with that, I'd be happy to take questions tonight, but this would be something we would be coming back in three weeks for July 14th. I would say it would be, in times like this in the past, we have actually even gone ahead and posted an anticip uh, anticipated posting for a position such as this. But I would want to hold, at least if I get a sense from the board tonight that there are some questions about this um, that might lead us to hold off on an anticipated posting. If not, if there, uh, we, can, we could move forward with that. We would not be interviewing, we would not be moving forward until I had board approval on the 14th. So it is important that not to get out in front of this too much, but um, it is a strong recommendation that I'm providing for you tonight as well. So I would really appreciate initial thoughts, questions, and whether or not we would be okay to at least move forward with an anticipated posting. I have a brief question. Is the coach, um, his or her main job, is that to work with teachers to help them with what they're going through because it's a huge process? Is that their main I job would role? Very simply said, yes. Thank you. Yes. That's fine. Anyone else? Questions? How will we measure, and this is going to sound a little bit redundant, but how will we measure the effectiveness of these effectiveness coaches? <laughs> Great question. I think there are a number of things, quite honestly, tied into the implementation of this new evaluation system. When we, when we talk about the effectiveness or how we're going to measure the, how we do this, ultimately it's going to result in how smooth of a transition and implementation across the board for our, for our staff, our teaching staff and our principals. So Mr. Menninger, fair question, targeting specifically the effectiveness coaches. Um, we'll be looking at uh, feedback and input, but to, be able to right now separate that from everything else as far as the staff development that we are doing continually with the teachers and with our principals. Um, I think uh, it's certainly advisable that we do this. This is not a required position by DPI, but strongly advisable. And as a district, uh, we believe it's necessary. I would say tonight I'm not able to present you any specific measures of evaluating this position, but it would be part of that person's evaluation of how effective they are doing in their position. They would be evaluated on their job responsibilities as well. So it'd be, again, it would be a part of their evaluation. I have a question. Is this connected to, would this person then be also connected to the fidelity checks that, that have occurred within the district that are also looking at, you know, practicing these new efforts with fidelity? I mean, if so, if someone is rated at a certain level, will this person be assigned to help them? Or how will that I tie into that? I think even initially under the math coaching responsibility that we had previously presented, um, when we're talking about helping our teachers uh, with instructional practices, absolutely. So uh, measuring the, you know, the, the level of implementation and as you talk about fidelity, 
that's what we look to, have looked at our math coaches to be involved with already this year. So even just the math coach piece, I would have to say, yes, this person would be an important resource and support for our teachers with that. Would, the, would this person be able to be accessed by the staff themselves if they felt they needed it, or is this all gonna come from someone else evaluating them? How is that gonna work? This instructional coach position is primarily, again, geared towards direct support for teachers. But I mean, are they, are they accessing, it, accessing it themselves because they, they want this, or is it something that's been identified for them saying you need this because, you understand what I'm saying? Is it offered to everyone, or can they just, can teachers go in and request additional assistance, or how is it determined who will get? Well, with the educator support? effectiveness, um, that's going to apply just about to everybody. Correct, right. There are just, there are a few positions that for next year will not be under that, but I think that's oh, might be 20 or 30 positions out of 330. Some of our specialist positions. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, food service employees 2014-15 base wage agreement, Mr. Clark. If I may take the liberty of addressing 9.3 food service employees, 9.4 drivers, 9.5 custodial maintenance, and 9.6 all at once? Sure. You have before you in those agenda items the 2014-15 base wage determination uh, for over 124 employees. Um, you will be asked to approve these uh, recommendations later tonight. And that is typical for um, settlement of upcoming year's uh, wage rates is that it be presented and approved at the same uh, meeting. The wage rate increases associated with these four items are within the limits uh, set by the board. Base wage increases uh, for each groups make allowance for longevity or years of service based increases for each of those groups. As a special note and something that differentiates the food service uh, base wage uh, for next year from the other groups is that there has been a bit of compression of the steps uh, for wage rate, rate increases. That is to say, in their current wage schedule, in the first five years, there's three steps of wage increases. They are the only group that have to go through three step increases. Uh, the rest of the groups in the district have one or two. And so the recommendation for that group actually compresses from three to two steps in the first five years. Um, want to say thank you to the employees in those groups. Uh, for the contribution they make to the success of students every day. And we're glad to have them here and hope that this compensation recognizes their contribution. Also want to thank the employees who took the time to meet and share and discuss wages. I believe the dialogue helped promote uh, a more common understanding between the district and the employees and led to the best possible wage uh, settlement for next year. And if there are any questions? None? No? Okay, thank you. 2013-14 uh, budget revisions, uh, Mr. Miller. In your board pack packets are agenda items 9.7 and 9.8. I'll begin with the fund balance designation item 9.8 since those fund balance figures flow into the report under 9.7. Item 9.8 is the fund balance designation report. The school board is asked annually to take action to designate the purpose of for financial resources in the fund equity prior to June 30th. 
This report was reviewed by the Finance Committee as to the format at the last Finance Committee meeting of June 16th. The Finance Committee recommended a wording modification that is identified by an asterisk after the item titled Operation, Operational Cash Flow Needs. It's uh, listed there near, near the bottom. Uh, that's, that begins with this June 30th uh, estimate fluctuates from month to month and so forth. The um, <clears throat> item number 9.8 is the fourth quarter June revised budget figure. And these, these budget reflect, uh, revisions reflect the most current projections of revenues by source and expenditure uh, by function. Uh, the development of the 2013-14 budget started with identification of identif anticipated revenues. With this fourth quarter revised budget, uh, it has a planned deficit of 7,103, which is a, an improvement from the original uh, budget in October, which was a planned def deficit of uh, $310,000. Attached is, to your report is a, the 2013-14 revised budget summary in DPI format, detailing the original budget, revised budget as of June, and um, the revised budget figures in the June 13, 2013 revisions. Those are presented tonight for your review and approval. Okay. Anyone questions? meeting okay thank, thank you. you very much all right we'll move along to consent agenda items uh, are there any items that you would like to consider separately if not then I would entertain a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda as presented I would so approve is there a second, second. any discussion Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Um, board member reports and discussion. I will call upon board members in the order of roll call and ask you to present any comments or committee reports that you have. Um, Mr. Ockrey. No any, discussion here. No. None? All right. Um, Mrs. Collins? Yes, the only um, update that I have um, relates to the Finance Committee, and I'm the chair now, so I'm, um, it's been a good learning experience for me um, in talking about the budget that Mr. Miller was um, going into detail about. Uh, it was kind of eye-opening to look at the budget items when we were reviewing just the different categories, and um, as a committee, we were talking about the unassigned spendable <coughs> items that um, actually equals over a million and a half dollars. And when you look at that, I think the reason we asked that um, Mr. Miller look at changing some of the wording or adding a little explanation about that has to do with if you think about unassigned spendable items, you're thinking, wow, we've got all this extra money laying around at any given point in time that boy that must mean that we have a bunch of money sitting around in the budget but actually as it was explained um, to us that really it's looking at a, a window shot of a year's time with money coming into the district you know that looks at aid different kinds of state and federal aids and other things and then money going out to pay for certain things that are just regular bills that come to the district throughout the whole year so it was um, I think it was really helpful to have that explanation because if I were um, someone in the public that didn't know or wasn't able to be part of this committee, I wouldn't know that. And so it was helpful to have that be a little bit more explained in detail on that. Um, the other thing with our uh, finance committee group, we talked about um, the actual competitive beverage food sales um, draft that's coming out, talking about looking at the federal guidelines for um, meals and nutrition within the district and how that's gonna look a lot different. And I think it was Patrick Barlow, who's a community member and myself, were a little alarmed at the fact that parents can't bring cupcakes for their kids for birthdays, maybe next year. And because of these new guidelines that are coming out, and so lots of discussion around that. 
And the other issue was looking at, so we're having students look at their, and have students' uh, meal items be much more healthy and portion sizes and all awareness about that. This shit turned to staff. And are staff going to want to adjust their options for beverage sales and um, vending machine items um, on the different campuses? So lots of interesting talk about, about that. So that's about all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Dunlap? I have nothing at this time. All right, Mr. Cruz? Um, I really enjoyed the uh, Matthew Fail um, in service we did. I thought it was highly, highly valuable. I learned a lot on the, uh, the passions we have for the board and um, I, was, uh, I thought that it was really worth going to. And uh, anyway, I just, uh, it just, uh, I guess it helps give me more perspective in my role and our role as uh, school leaders. So thank you again, Dale. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Mayor. Um, just a quick thing we have talked about with the new staff member at Evergreen. We also talked about eventually SALC will look at our class size just, just formula, and over the course of the summer, you know, plans to meet with the important people to to see what impact that has. I think our board has lots of questions that our committee needs to bring back to them so for sure that's there um and that's it okay thank you mr mettinger um just three relatively quick things this evening first i, I want to thank the group that continues to be very loyal and coming to these board meetings and it seems like after a lot of discussion after several meetings, it, it kind of went very quiet without a lot of fanfare tonight, but their <laughs> input very important, and thank you um, for your continued support um, at these meetings as well, so thank you. Um, for those of you who know, I, I cannot help it, but after tonight, there are only two more regular board meetings before the fall sport starts up again, so if you don't think summer is going fast, that will put it into perspective. Um, and then I, I did want to comment, and, and unfortunately a little on the negative side tonight, but uh, Saturday morning I walked out to grab the newspaper, nice and bright and early Saturday morning, and what did we find on the headlines but open enrollment a drain for Holman? Not a good reflection for our school district. And uh, you know, reading through some of the comments, and I could not agree with uh, Dr. Carlson anymore when in the last sentence here we have to ask in order to continue to get better. Um, and that's what we're about. And I think we do need to continue to ask because this is concerning. You know, when I look at, at our school district and look at, at some of the things that we've put in place to have the quality of education, the small class sizes and things like that, and why people continue to choose to go to other schools more than here, um, obviously is concerning. And I, I know sometimes we dismiss it as convenience, but I, I would like to think that if the parents truly perceive the quality of education here is better that they would not put convenience in front of the quality of education of their of their students and so I do think we need to take a, a long hard look at that I, I, I'm going to opinionate here just a little bit and have to think that if, if maybe you know technology is not a piece of that I know we've continued to fall behind in some of the technological needs we see people continuing to go more to some of the virtual schools and, and obviously, you know, my concern is we have fallen behind, and it, it seems like when we have an opportunity to invest even more in technology, we choose not to, as we recently had with the savings from the insurance. We decided to go a different route with that. And, um, you know, I think at some point we have to ask what is in the best need of our students and what is going to help us provide that quality education, and not only what we tell ourselves, but what does the community and the others tell us through some of that as well. So I do hope that, as the, the comment made, Dr. Carlson, is that we do spend some time really asking ourselves some of those hard introspective questions and, and you know, not always take the easy route, but sometimes question ourselves as well um, and may have to look in the mirror. So that's all I have this evening. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to thank the group that continues to come to our meetings too, and I hope you um, aren't going to give up and end up staying home eventually. We like to at least <laughs> rotate with some of your friends and 
you know, we do like that. We need to have input, and the, the parents and the staff. So I hope you keep coming and don't get tired of sitting in the back row all the time. You can move up towards the front. Um, and the only other comment I have is we did not have a personnel and governance committee meeting this month, and um, I will be participating in the HOPE um, negotiations on Thursday. And that is it. So then we will move along to correspondence that has been received from the Village of Holman. Um, thank you note, and then school board committee written reports. We have finance notes, building and grounds notes, and then our school board meeting schedule. Uh, we have a meeting July 14th, July 28th, August 11th, and August 25th. And then, um, Item 11.5, board <coughs> policy for review, the competitive beverage and food sales. Again, this is for review by the board. This is that <coughs> uh, philosophical uh, point where if you want to provide any specific thoughts, direction, now's your opportunity. Are we talking about the food sale, food program? Yes. I so trust our department whatever they would bring forward i'd be happy with that um they're moving towards some really healthy stuff anyone else yeah the salad was really good the other night <laughs> <laughs> on a positive note i believe i had seen some news on this in the paper as well that said where food sales were down in other school districts right. it was yes. up in yes. Holman so I also want to point out some of the positive news as well I think I had seen that recently as well so that's a very good sign for the I'm always school. amazed like all, right. all the times I've gone there there's always roasted vegetables always and a salad bar that is phenomenal so thank you to Mr. Gasper yep Anyone else? I guess I'll just say I hope we can still bring home baked items, no. sweets for our kids' birthdays, that it isn't so far reaching into an additional snack time. That because that was brought up as something that is being considered of anything being provided during the school day, and the school day being defined as from the time the you know morning starts till the end, and so. I would kind of miss that. Maybe we would have to think about how we can put make zucchini bread into something that's appetizing or pumpkin cake or something more nutritional. Maybe they can serve them on the bus. Serve them on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if I'm speaking at the committee level, again, I think what we have in the pack, there are some already some recommended changes for people to look at as we bring this forward again. Would that be correct? In, in your board packet tonight, the, uh, a draft prepared by Mr. Gasper and myself, uh, complying with the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act, uh, were made. The one big question, as uh, Ms. Collins referred to earlier, is is there any type of expectation that staff begin to um, em embrace and model the types of behaviors from students, and particularly in light of the fact of commitments we've made to wellness in the district and uh, Mr. Menninger mentioned health insurance and that was part of it. We're going to be healthier people. Um, does this policy begin to address that or do we um, not pay any attention to that? So Alex is our youngest person here who probably had cupcakes <laughs> <laughs> more recently than all of us. What do you think about that? Hmm. <laughs> I know a lot of kids aren't fans of smaller portions. Um, I guess that's the plainest way I can say that. And if there are smaller portions next year, I'm probably going to have to hear about it from people. <laughs> um, yeah, they've got some very, very, very vocal, strong opinions about that. I love cupcakes. I love when people bring <laughs> cupcakes to class, and you know I think it may continue. Um, probably will. Um, <laughs> kids have are strong-headed. Um, I think it's very. I like what we're doing, becoming more, you know, supported on ourselves, growing our own food. I mean, we're gonna have the FFA's growing chickens and corn, and that's fantastic. Uh, 
I'm looking forward to in the future us doing more and more of that, you know, sort of weaning ourselves off of, you know, the bigger industries and companies coming in. But yeah, um, I'm definitely against smaller portions because I eat here every day. And some things, sometimes I just, you know, there's so much food, I get so full. And other times when there's only four chicken nuggets, then, you know, not so much. But healthy is better, as, I guess. As I understand it, and help me with this, Alex, is the, the there are smaller portions of things like the meat or whatever. Yes. But then they encourage you to take lots more salad and fruit, but kids don't always want... And I read about that too. They don't always want that. So we're sort of in a transition mode. Well, I was, you know. Training, is is that? Yeah, I think you're weary of cafeteria, like vegetables or things like that. I remember my freshman year, I decided to go in and have some cafeteria. I think it was pickled herring. And that's nothing you should ever get. this is get. Holman, Alex. <laughs> and, I, and I love pickled herring. Pickled herring. But you, you shouldn't get that at a cafeteria, a school cafeteria. And so I think a lot of kids have, you know, a bad um, sort of mentality going in about getting a salad from a school or vegetables from a school. And it's always good. I try it, and it's always, you know, excellent. Um, but, yeah, I think they'd rather have more chicken nuggets than more salad. Well, herring, Viking strong. Oh. I love it, but it was, <laughs> my body rejected it. <laughs> Thank you so much, though, for your, your answers. I think it's important for us to always remember what the kids think, and I think Mike knows that, too, mm -hmm. you know, and still has to live with certain changes that he has to put up with, but I appreciate you being here to give us that input. And pickled herring, no wonder you're kind of shying away from school, <laughs> school lunches. It wasn't and the I'm only thing on the menu. <laughs> well, I was so excited. What did you say, Jay? I said pickled herring wasn't the only thing on the menu. <laughs> well, I, even that it's available there. That should only that be Drugans. at Drugans. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, see, I would go. If I know what day that is, I could maybe, you know. Ugh. Could Anyhow, I, could I just ask clarification. Uh, again, this is technically the review, and we would be coming <laughs> back for a first reading. Uh, the next board meeting, or does the committee need another? I, I believe it may be longer than the next board meeting. Uh, we really want to make sure that we get uh, some administrative review and perspective on this uh, as well, and we would not have that done by the next meeting. Does the school nurse have input on this food policy? That could be added. Uh, this is really an effort to comply with the uh, Healthy Hungry Free Kids okay. Act, uh, primarily. That's what's brought it up. I do mention the um, staff nutrition guidelines uh, because that is embodied in the policy. But we could, we could uh, seek the nurse's input as well. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Uh, board meeting reflection. Any thoughts? A little long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Cheryl's going to be sorry she missed the herring discussion. I know that. <laughs> and on that note, um, is there any other business that needs to come before the board at this time? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I would so move. Is there a second? And second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion passes. We are adjourned at 740. Nice job. Thank you. Nice job, Anita. Thank you.